Can America be fixed or should we just scrap it and start over again? Interesting question. Um, there's no doubt that America's uh, dying right now. Um, there's division, there's economic problems, there's war problems, there's all kinds of stuff going wrong with America. And uh, the question comes up, what's the future of this nation? You read the book of Revelation, there is no Western superpower, so at some point in time America is going to fall. The question is, um, after the fall, can you fix it, bring it back to what it once was? I, mean, I know not perfectly, but I'm saying kind of stand for the old America again, or do you just say, okay, brand new country, we won't even call it America, we'll just call it, you know, something else, you know, the other one, America Junior, the other, you know, whatever. <laughs> Well, let me illustrate my point here. I'll show you a picture of America. Right here. <laughs> this is our old Chevy Tracker. Uh, I was pulling it the one time. Ripped the front plastic bumper thing off. It's only got one wheel on it anymore. Because uh, I was going to use the, the wheels and tires for the other Tracker that we got. And that one, the reason I didn't get that tire off, point to it here, that one, is because the final lug nut on it it's kind of rounded over on the edges and I couldn't get a good purchase on it with the, the star wrench, you know. And so uh, that's a problem. Uh, it also has the transmission slips. It Last time I checked it, it looked like there was some antifreeze getting into the oil, which is not a good thing if you know anything about motors. If you can see down there, it's missing a, a door handle. Pulled it and it and broke off <laughs> it's missing one on the other side too um it doesn't have a catalytic converter anymore because of a thief stealing it um battery's dead uh lots of issues so the question comes up is it worth fixing or do you just scrap it and um kind of goes along with what america's like right now can america be fixed or should we just scrap it and start over. Well, there's uh, Bible principles for both. The principle for fixing it would be, of course, uh, where the scripture talks about back in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6 ask for the old paths, where's the good way? And walk there, therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. You know, go back to the old way of the, that America used to be. You know, older people like me, and those that are even older than me, you know, uh, born in 1975 uh, I've lived most of my life was lived in the 20th century and it was pretty good back then it was very good back then and um, this modern America the way things are going it's just it's insane I, I can't even relate to it and it isn't just well America was good no we're talking about ancient ways of doing things I saw this commercial yesterday of uh, dating, some dating thing or whatever else, and uh, this, you know, on YouTube, I don't watch television, but they were talking about how that, uh, you know, showed this thing of this young guy going to this house and he knocks on the door and the girl comes to the door dressed in a pretty dress and she's got a bow in her hair and the guy says, you know, you look beautiful or whatever he said. And he goes out, gets the door for her and everything. And uh, yeah, that's the way it used to be not just in the 20th century, but in the 19th century and the 18th century and going back through. Young men that were courting girls, you want to make a good impression on the girl, so you go, you get the door for her, you, you treat her in a chivalrous way. You know, you treat her right. Well, now it's just, you know, then it showed the modern thing, you just pull up in your Tesla car or whatever and you, you text her, here, oh, you know, and she writes back, I'll be right out or something, you know, texts you. Um, that's not good. That's a, the downfall of a society. So, how would you return to the old paths here in America? Well, what you would do is you would say, um, we need to, first of all, deport all the illegals that have come here. I don't care how long they've been here. Deport them all. Do not put them in political offices. Do not, do not let them be police officers. I've been hearing that lately. It's insane. Uh, you know, get rid of all the illegals, um, bring back treason 
you know, the crime that treason should be a, a crime. You know, communism is a treasonous system against America, you know, the American capitalist system that we've had. And of course, you know, you get crony capitalism, you get that and whatever, which is evil, certainly. But you can make, you know, uh, laws and things, pass laws, get those back on the books again, where people can't make monopolies with capitalism. Simple, not that hard. Uh, make English the official language of America. Don't waste billions of dollars a year translating everything into other people's languages. That's nonsense. Um, you know, uh, imprison most of the politicians that are out there. Uh, make people, you know, they're going to be in, in political office. Uh, make them, you know, swear an oath to defend the Constitution. And... Um, you know, there are ways that you could bring America back, but uh, a lot of people right now are subversive agents in this country, people that are into socialism and communism and whatever, and they would fight it, they would start a civil war. And quite frankly, start the civil war, and those people could be eliminated and we get back to being Americans again, um, regardless of your race or whatever else. Um, and of course, you know, Catholics in America, well, they have a right to be here as long as they're not uh, trying to persecute Protestants because this is a Protestant nation, not a Catholic nation. Um, so there are ways to bring America back. You know, this Trump stuff, make America great again. Well, it'd be a good movement if Trump wasn't part of it. Uh, I don't trust Trump. He's a liberal city boy and um, an actor. Not a good combination. So, uh, Anybody else, yeah, I might be inclined to tr trust them, but, you know, they can use Trump to bring this thing about. Well, okay, whatever. Again, as a Christian, we're never going to, own, you know, control the political system, you know, until the Lord comes back and sets up his kingdom for 1,000 years physically on the earth with him ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. Then we'll have political sway. But until then, we won't. So what do we do as Christians? Well, we should look for ways political systems and pray for political leaders to say, you know, please respect our freedom. Please respect our liberty, liberty that we have in Jesus Christ. Um, liberty of conscience, in other words. That's a Christian concept, liberty of conscience. That is not a communistic, atheistic type of a thing. You know, atheists can talk all they want about, um, you know, being free to do what they want and whatever else. But the fact of the matter is, atheists, when they're in political power, they persecute their enemies. They put their enemies to death. Don't worry about organized religion. Worry about uh, communistic atheism. That's been the biggest killer in the 20th century. But how would we restart America? Okay, let's, we could, or uh, I'll say, make a whole new country. What would we do? Well, we would have to base it somewhat on the Constitution. And um, we couldn't just, you don't just abandon the Constitution. There's a lot of good things in there. Um, but, you know, have to come to some kind of Republican form of government, and I don't mean Republican political party, I mean the Republic where law, not majority rule, is, you know, how you enforce things. You say the law is supreme, not what most people think. You know, you come up with good, just laws. That's what America originally was. Um, that would be a good thing. So, uh, I'd like to hear your thoughts, or read your thoughts. I can't really hear them. But uh, put them down in the comment section below. I'd be curious to hear what people have to say about this. But, um, you know, whatever has to be done here in America, it's going to be tough. And people are going to die. And I hear people that, you know, I hope it doesn't come to that. Well, who wants to die? You know, who wants to see lots of death and whatever else? Well, not many people. But you know what? If it has to be done, it has to be done. There's no way around it. And as a Christian, you have to look and you have to say the wages of sin is death, right? Uh, a lot of these people that are out there, these radical liber liberals and everything, um, they've, they are sinning publicly, pridefully, and uh, they are doing, trying to defile little children, perverts, you know, dancing naked in front of little children and things. That has to stop. That has to stop. And the aborting of little babies because you don't want to have a baby, it's not a convenient time for you, wicked murderers. Um, that has to stop as well. And there's a lot of things that need to stop in this nation. And um, you say, well, brother, we're, we're so close to the rapture. We're going to be caught up soon in things. Oh, uh, well, I hope so. 
But you know what? Uh, our time that we have here, we have to do what we can to hinder the Antichrist system. And not just say, well, you know, it's all just supposed to fall apart and whatever, so let's not bother. Well, your health is supposed to fall apart too as you get older. That Does that mean you just don't care about nutrition or something? No, of course not. You get up, you eat the right types of food, you go out, you get some exercise. You know, you have to do things in this life, brethren. You don't just give up and say, oh, you know, K sera sera, whatever will be, will be. Uh, no, you don't do that. We're supposed to be a fighting people, resisting people. Again, onward Christian soldiers, the old hymn. You know, the, the modern little sissy britches music that, that you see in these modern churches, they don't sing that way anymore. It's not Christian soldiers, it's, you know, I have a feeling or something or whatever, <laughs> life enhancement. That's not what it's supposed to be. We're supposed to fight, you know. Um, the Bible says the word of war, good warfare, to take on, take on the, uh, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand in the, in the evil day and things. We're supposed to stand, we're supposed to fight. So uh, the fight will come eventually, but it's going to be because it's forced in many cases. Um, a lot of people aren't going to fight until there's someone kicking their door in, you know. Um, so, and you say, well, brother, uh, how do we start the fight? Very simple. Um, you can start right now. Uh, fight in the spiritual realm. Pray for your leaders. Uh, fight in the sense of saying, I'm not going to be part of some wicked church building that's, you know, under government headship, under 501c3 tax exempt status, where they're, the pastor's muzzled. He can't say certain things that would affect public policy. According to the IRS code, I've done videos on it. Um, get out of that. Form, uh, you know, house churches that uh, will not shut down for any reason. Doesn't matter what kind of stuff that they come out with. You just say, no, we're not shutting down. Our God says that we're going to worship together and that's the way it is, period. We don't care what you think. Um, and you need to have the right Bible. Oh, it's King James only, guys sticking to the old thing. I understand textual criticism, okay? I studied it for many years. I understand that the vast majority of extant Greek manuscripts, over 99% line up with the received text, which underlies the King James Bible. The new ones, the new versions, come from Vaticanus and Sinaiticus primarily. That's the two oldest and best manuscripts that they talk about. Uh, believe me, I understand. I have both copies of James White's book. I have D.A. Carson's book. I have uh, John Ankerberg. I have a lot of the books against the King James Bible. I've studied both sides, all right? And I made up my mind. I thought, okay, if this King James Bible's real, then I'm going to live by it and see if it works. And it works. It works very well. I've seen the miraculous power of the King James Bible. It's not just your ordinary book. Um, so again, you can, you want to lie about me and say, oh, Denlinger, you're ignorant. You don't understand the, the textual arguments. Oh, I understand them very well, okay? Um, so, uh, you know, the whole point of the Protestant Reformation was to get the Bible and pure doctrine into the hands of the common man because that's what will cause revolution. And we need to have weapons in the hands of common men to cause revolution. That's why they want to take your weapons away. Remember that. So uh, leave your comments in the section down there below. I'd like to read them. That is going to be it. Thank you for watching.